Hey folks, welcome to part 22 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be true or false, Tableau animations can be turned off. So what are Tableau animations in the first place? So for this, we're going to go into tab, uh, Tableau over here. And I have this dashboard set up with uh, two worksheets, but I just want to kind of demonstrate what an animation is. So if you don't already know, by default, Tableau is going to have animations enabled by default. And that's basically anytime you have some sign, uh, some sort of expected movement. So like if I have the category filter here and let's say I filter out furniture instead of these three bars or these three um, categories, we're actually going to have two. But when you have animations turned on, you kind of see that flow, right? You see that gradual movement where it goes from three to two and two to three. That's what an animation is. And, you know, depending on the visualization, that could be a little bit different. But according to the question here, can they be turned off, true or false? Well, let's go into the format menu within Tableau. And then if you go to animations, you will notice um, there's actually an animations pane. And over here, you have a workbook default. As you can see, by default, it is turned on and the default duration is 0.3 seconds. And if I click on a particular worksheet, because right now you only see the workbook level. If I click on a worksheet, you will now see at a particular worksheet level whether or not you have the animation on or off. Now, let's see what happens if we actually make the animation turn off for this particular sheet. So now that it's off and the workbook one, the default is still on, that doesn't mean the worksheet is on because we did explicitly turn it off. If I click on any of these uh, filters over here, you will notice there's no longer that animation, right? It just kind of quickly toggles between those views. You no longer have that flow that we had before. So in short, this is going to be true because yes, you can in fact turn Tableau animations off. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, which of the following can be used to work with data offline? Would you use a live connection, an extract, Tableau server, or Tableau cloud? And for this, we're gonna reference the Tableau documentation which I have open over here, which talks about extracting your data. And a data extract is a subset of information that is saved separately from the original data set. Um, but long story short, it has a number of different benefits, right? Uh, between handling large data sets, improving, you know, improved performance, enhanced functionality, and last but not least, offline data access. Because with an extract, instead of tapping into an actual live connection, you're actually uh, basically storing this data essentially at the workbook level. It's gonna be decoupled from the actual live connection. So in a sense, let's say you have a workbook and you have, you know, you extract your data. So if you go into this workbook over here um, and by default, again, it's, it's probably gonna be live connection. See, it's executing the query. If I convert this to an extract and I let the data extract and I save this workbook, then I can actually edit this workbook um, in real time within my local environment, even if I'm disconnected from the internet, because I no longer need any sort of connection to any in any data source other than what's within that extract, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's basically in a nutshell what an extract is. A live connection, as we saw here, that's the opposite. So that's basically tapping into um, a database live. That's what you see over here. So in real time, whenever I make a change, it's gonna be querying that database every single time. And that's not what we want. So um, clearly not the solution here. Um, again, extract is going to look, it does look to be the correct solution. The other two options are Tableau Server and Tableau Cloud. But remember, both of these, they're gonna be hosted either on the cloud, uh, whether you know um, it's on the cloud or on premise. In either case, that's not gonna be offline. So if you did wanna work with data offline, Extract would be the only viable solution here. Next question, which of the following describes the image below? Is it gonna be the data sources tab, the data pane, the, uh, the table preview, or the analytics pane? So if you look over here, we just have this screenshot where you see uh, what the actual data source is. You kind of have that uh, database sign with a, with a check mark indicating it's your primary data source. Um, and then you have a list of your tables here. You have the order table, customer name, location, everything with, within my um, within the screenshot here based on the sample superstore data set. So basically it's listing out um, all of the columns essentially um, and you know the respective data types, if there's any kind of hierarchy. 
So what am I looking at here exactly? Is that gonna be the data sources tab, the data pane, the you know table preview, or the analytics pane? Well, if we go into Tableau, so this is the data source tab, um, and this is all your information as it pertains to the actual um, you know, connection that you establish and the data sources you establish, any sort of relationships and their underlying data. But what you see here is not what you see in the screenshot, right? We, we have more of this kind of vertical format. So it's not the data sources tab. If I go into a particular worksheet, I'm gonna have a few panes on the left. So I'm just gonna close out of this animations, but I'm gonna have a few panes on the left side, right? So I have a data pane and I have an analytics pane. Um, so again, first we have the data pane and just looking at this, this looks very much like our screenshot. In fact, that's exactly what our screenshot is. So the data pane is where you see exactly this. You see what the data source is. You have a search bar to search all of your fields or measures or calculated fields. And then you have all of the uh, subsequent objects as it pertains to data. So it is going to be data pane. Is it table preview? There's no real such thing as a table preview. However, um, there's a button here called view data. Again, not the same thing as table preview, so that wouldn't be the solution anyway. But you could actually preview the table here as well in addition to the data source tab if you wanted to, right? And then you have these different options if you wanted to download or look at your top X number of rows. So you do have that available at a table level. Um, all of that fun stuff. So again, it's not gonna be table uh, preview either. How about the last option, analytics pane? If I go into the analytics pane, again, these are really just your summary functions, your models, your customs, if you wanted to have maybe kind of a reference line on top of a visualization at a certain point, you can certainly do that. Um, that's what that would do essentially. But um, as it pertains to this screenshot, the only viable solution here will be the data pane because that's what we see here. So that's gonna be the solution. Next question, true or false sheets can be used as filters for other sheets on a dashboard. So what this means is, can you use on a particular dashboard, right? Cause you can have multiple sheets within a dashboard, kind of like we have here. So dashboard one, I have uh, a sheet here called bar chart one. I have a sheet here called Pi one. And the question is, is it possible to use this sheet as a filter? So for example, we have three different categories here. We have furniture, office supplies, technology. Down here we have a pie chart. So we have the same thing. We have a pie chart uh, in terms of profit broken out by, uh, by the different categories. So the question is, is it maybe possible to maybe click on furniture here and correspondingly it would you know highlight or it would essentially really filter everything out um, except for filter can we do that is there a quick way to do that is there a long way to do it long story short there's a very easy way to do that so it is possible um, so when you have a when you have a sheet selected you have kind of this outline and then you have this menu that pops up um, onto the right side uh, maybe even on the left side depending on the position of the sheet but this third icon where it looks like a filter, and if you hover over, the tooltip actually says use as a filter, you can actually click on it, and you'll notice now that icon is sort of filled in, right? So what that indicates is these, um, all the data points, all the marks within the sheet. Again, we have three marks, right? One, two, three. If I click on them, they are now going to act as filters for the entire dashboard. So if I click on furniture now, pay attention to the pie chart, right? Now it's just one huge blue circle because now it's only looking at furniture. It's filtered out all of the other categories and now we only have a profit of 19,000 showing. If I click furniture again to toggle back to this view where we didn't have anything filtered, notice it goes back to normal. So um, essentially we are controlling the other sheet with this sheet by using it as a filter. And you could do vice versa here. If I click on this right now, this is not going to apply because again, here we also have to indicate to use this as a filter. So I can click on this. And now when I click on office supplies, I will get the corresponding um, you know, visualization filtering on the other sheets as well. So 
So going back to the question here, true or false, sheets can be used as filters for other sheets on a dashboard. As you just witnessed, this one is gonna be true. Quick pause, if you like these videos but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which question you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching.